What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and I know I'm late on this. I had a pretty busy day yesterday. I had to get a ceiling fan fixed, a little toilet piece fixed, and then a new ceiling fan put in, which is just, I mean, it's it's a great start, you know? But of course, we are here with the all-access deep dive for Dynamic Game Day, which is a new thing coming to Madden, which should have probably been here a while back. But the real question is, how is it going to be balanced? You guys may be thinking, what even is it? We're going to get all that information right now. I think I will be pausing the video throughout, assumingly that I, uh, you know, need more clarification or need to give more clarification or my opinion on it. So hopefully that doesn't kill the vibes too much. And uh, of course, if you guys do enjoy Madden, if you guys enjoy the Madden 22 news videos, whether they're late or like they usually have been on time, maybe leave a like, maybe subscribe. Regardless, let's get into it and hear from uh, from Clint. Tom Brady. What's up, everyone? <laughs> Clint Oldenburg, That's all I've got for you. Producer of Madden NFL 22. Today, I'm thrilled to bring you some details on Madden He's 22's thrilled. all new dynamic game day feature and the three components that combine. Offensive line, offensive line juke move. Come on, man. I, I don't like this. Of these running backs the doing these things. Including player movement, catching. Did he just talk about like new player movement and catching? When like we have seen this animation a billion <laughs> times. The leg kick out, and he's going to slap the leg back down. I know that's kind of physically what he has to do, but we've seen that animation so... Oh, my lord, it's so common. Let's get into it. Jeez, hit stick and Henry. That seems illegal. Game Day is a next-gen feature that delivers on the raw energy and emotion of NFL game days through three core components. Game Day Atmosphere, Game Day Momentum, and next-gen stats star-driven... So game day atmosphere, momentum, and star-driven. So is all of this, like it says on the bottom there, only on the next gen game right like dynamic game day components so are the stadium abilities in that not on last gen and ai dynamic game day deepens the gameplay experience through new levels of strategy unique storytelling and immersive stadium atmospheres it also makes every snap and every game feel like a new challenge and impacts gameplay across every mode let's dive into the details starting with game day atmosphere game day atmosphere enhances every game of madden 22 by bringing to life the unique characteristics and personality of each NFL stadium, as well okay. as the real-world emotion, intensity, and fun of game day. So updated broadcast package featuring next-gen stats. is I, I the, the announcers were the same, but once again, it could have been just the beta. Um, but next-gen stats, so there'd be more in-depth, like kind of insights to how each player is playing, I would imagine. Super fans, you can see the, you know, the, uh, the different like outfits people are wearing. Uh, new crowd animations. Yeah, we've seen that. Momentum-driven sideline reactions, and then new celebrations. Okay. Some examples of how atmosphere can impact gameplay include crowd noise making Look at those guys. a quarterback to hear a call or make an audible at the line, or a receiver to miss a hot route, just like they might in real life. This all ties into the next component of Dynamic Game Day. The real is, oh, here's the thing. Here's the real question is, those are all grand, and, you know, we, uh, you know, if you've played the beta or, you know, got some information from people... Uh, there are negatives, so it's not just like the home team has the automatic advantage. It's usually like three positives, two negatives. Uh, I just wonder how often that happens because, like, I don't want like I've seen you know some of them are like third and fourth down, but that like that's big for that to activate every third and fourth down. You know, like a, a hot route messing up or someone running the wrong route. You know, like that's that's kind of you know that's kind of op. So I, I hope there's some balancing to how often these things play a factor. Because at the end of the day, especially if you're losing, the the crowd's not gonna always be in it. You know, if you're down 14 at home, the crowd's probably not gonna really start getting into it until you're you know kind of in their territory. So you know, it's it's not just like all the time the crowd's on. You know, all new game mechanic. But I bet you will be in game. Game Day Momentum allows you to feel the highs and lows of the momentum swings of every game with the performance-based momentum meter. Oh, okay, so that... <laughs> well, we've had the answer. So apparently there's momentum uh, and a momentum meter. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to be activated. He might actually tell us, but, you know, let's see. And it's in-game perks known as M-Factors. M. As mo ah, so there you are. So... While winning, home gains more momentum and away gains less. 
Uh, you can see that they got the momentum for the first one, which is that. And then if they do it again, home team has infinite stamina during plays, which if you have a guy with like jukebox or something, seems kind of OP. Seems like it's not going to be very realistic at all. And then if you get to the the furthest one, away team has trouble seeing non check down receivers. Um. Okay, that seems, especially in the snow, that seems kind of illegal, but sure. But obviously on the other side, the other team can get momentum as well. But obviously see what LinkedIn, which is, you know, the, the stadium, obviously, uh, the name of it. Uh, they have less momentum, but if they were to do it, home team QB has troubles seeing the check down receivers, and then the away team has infinite stamina during plays. So they have the exact same ones pretty much, uh, but as long as LinkedIn is active, you know, the Eagles are going to get it faster while the Giants aren't going to get it as fast. And obviously in the fourth, it's going to be hard, I would imagine, to lose that momentum necessarily, but... Uh, very, very interesting. Unless you can see in the bottom left here, game day factors. Players run slightly slower than normal. And then well-rested. Players fatigue slower than normal. Okay. Momentum Information to note. Lost. M factors will affect teams in unexpected ways. Some M factor impacts include leaving We've a seen kicker that. in the ice state. Yeah, look at that. Like Receiver <laughs> icons going missing. Oh, by the way, the Lions are super OP. I I'm thinking maybe they're our online team. Uh, so, actually, it probably doesn't even matter because online probably won't even be, like, the online league won't even be next-gen, I would imagine. So, if it's not, then it probably doesn't matter. But the Lions, I believe, they get slightly faster acceleration for their home field. It's kind of OP. Or making a hot route become more difficult to perform. So, how does that work? Is it like, You can see at the top right there, the uh, the play clock is uh is dropping and it's like really low so i would imagine you know it's something where he's not going to be able to get her maybe at the attempted a few times and and obviously uh or maybe the question mark just means you can't uh hot route at all you know because obviously we all know that that's the x receiver very likely the x receiver because obviously it's a five wide could be like a a wide receiver screen and the options are flipped but uh, that's likely the x wide receiver but it says question mark so you would maybe assume that because the top right timer is dropping, maybe at one second, they'll allow you to... Sw I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. You can see he's not getting the hot route. Using home field advantage in Madden 22. Every NFL stadium in the game features a unique M factor that when triggered... Of course, you can see all of those... The uh, the stadiums, obviously, there's there's like articles all over Google you can look up for each one, but some of them are similar. Some are really OP, like the uh, the Saints is really OP. Like we said, third and fourth down, the away team, uh, their their receivers may run the wrong route. The Broncos, the opposing team, uh, has, what is it called, less stamina for plays. And unlock a special boost created for each NFL team's environment. The home team will always have one extra M factor in the momentum yeah. meter, simulating the difficulty of winning on the road in the NFL. Which is These fair. Unique M factors will be the first to unlock. The okay, we're seeing the pick happens. six. Is that going to knock their momentum all the way down? Home field advantage. It does. Oh, oh damn! Did you see that on the top of the screen? That pick six erased it. They had LinkedIn, and then the pick six not only took it away, but it like filled their bar up, and it looked like it was still going. Stadiums. That's kind of crazy. So the, the one thing is, the momentum things for pretty much every game mode on next gen, right? And what is that route, dude? What are, what are these routes? How does this work? Look at look at this. I don't even know what I'm looking at. <laughs> oh, play art is hard to see. So you pretty much have to know what play you're running, because uh, yeah. Winning conditions make kicking a field goal more difficult. That should affect the Bears as well now, over the years. Now, onto the third component of Dynamic Game Day, next-gen stats. Next-gen stats. Over the last two Star years, AI. more than 80% of games have been played against the CPU. By leveraging the NFL's next-gen Wait, what was it? More than 80% of games have been played against the CPU. So, how many... The problem with that is, it's not about franchise necessarily. A lot of games were played for uh, solo challenges or whatever. Mm -hmm. By leveraging the NFL's next-gen stats, we've upgraded AI player behaviors and team tendencies. I hope so. so. Single-player games will feel just as deep and meaningful as playing against other humans. Good. For individual AI players, next-gen stats are now used to drive player tendencies like these. 
QB decision making under pressure, QB passing uh, aggressiveness. See, the problem wasn't is uh, last year wasn't oh their aggressiveness or how good they are under pressure. The problem is the plays were the exact same, dude. They would throw it to the flat really late, mind you. They would throw the curl, uh, the 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 inside stop route. There there was nothing. They like there was no like they didn't go deep ever. Like you could literally put a guy and a spy on the on the boundary, and nine times out of ten, the quarterback would even throw it right away, or at all, like or at all. Bulk area tendencies around breaking in or evading tackles. That's big because the AI really doesn't break tackles that much, or even try to juke move when they have you know even a one on one look. QB time to throw. QB scramble frequency. The f- scramble frequency. Like, Lamar Jackson looks to scramble 24-7. Uh, any quarterback, like, above 80 speed in the gauntlet, which I know no one really cares about. It's just me, pretty much. Uh, th- would break half the freaking challenges because they would just run when they're not supposed to. They're supposed to be throwing. And then more. Who knows? For Team AI, each team will have its own personality, play-calling style, and team tendencies, all driven by next-gen stats. For example, defenses like the Steelers who like the Blitz will challenge your pocket presence on... All right, so the question is, are these going to be predetermined team-based ones, or is it going to actually be based on the players they have? Because obviously, not even just for franchise, but for also those cha- you know solo challenges, they have a lot of those teams where it's like the community leader team where they like have all the players that that person built or you know some special squads that you have to beat. So like, are those teams going to play to those tendencies, or are they going to just be like, Oh, the Steelers love the blitz, even though the challenge is bad pass rushers, insane coverage guys, you know? So, you know, I don't know. But for franchise, you know, I do fantasy draft franchise uh, like every single year. So, and obviously in online leagues, there's going to be a ton of different trades and draft picks are going to change up the team. So I wonder how that's going to work. Obviously for user league, but it doesn't matter as much because you're a user team choosing that. Playing against a run heavy team like the Ravens will be a completely different experience than playing the pass heavy bills. The pass heavy the bills. Franchise, these tendencies will evolve all season. Hurdle. <laughs> You're change, not gonna be able to do that. Either in the real world or within your franchise sim, so that each game. I hate the single digit things. Each week in the NFL season. Next up, core gameplay and Here we go. We've gone even deeper with next gen player movement this year, making players cool. more authentic and explosive in their movements and interactions. Hopefully, and more nuance, context, and intelligence. As far as the the player movement stuff, I mean, it looks like they're about to show, what is it, updates um, on next gen, Uh, but like the breaks were just so bad, like cutting for a route, was it's just, it doesn't matter who you got, Uh, spin move, juke move, you can have something in the 90s, and it just feels like you're trying to, you know, cut move with like Josh Adams on last gen, (laughs) like it it really wasn't good, but obviously we're about to hear a little bit more here. More route running and player speed data. There you go. You'll also see the following. All right, obviously I'm going to pause these. So max effort animations for all players when running at top speed. For all players. Okay, more responsible control for quarterbacks to and from scramble. Yeah, the the, the startup acceleration for trying to st- uh, scramble was awful. Signature releases and cuts for receivers and route running. They literally said that last year, but it just felt like everyone's route running sucked. More control when turning up the field after a catch. I can admit to uh, when playing in the beta, that one was 100% factual. The next-gen experience on uh, the beta, at least, definitely a massive improvement from last-gen. Uh, well, last year's next-gen, and I would have easily, like I mentioned once before, I would have easily played another next-gen franchise if that's how it was. If this upcoming, as the way it felt, is how it was last year, I definitely would have. Contextual intelligence and tackling, touch player down, sideline tackles, early hurdle, and more. As far as the touch player down, that's something that needs to be in Madden, and I'm glad they are doing it. Because usually when a guy is down and no one's around, you just run through the player. So, you know, I would like to see, you know, the guy when you're running up, he like touches him. I just hope there's no glitchy animations. It just seems like something's going to happen where your guy runs up and touches him down, but the game's not going to register that for some weird reason, and they're going to get up and score, and it's going to lead to that that untackleable glitch. I don't know why, but it just seems like it. Expect more control when it comes to catching, like independent player battles for balls independent. in the air, improved sideline catch flip detection, and more control and responsiveness in terms of the field. Ooh, that's kind of nice. 
tackling improvements include big bruising ball carriers Whew. will be more likely to fall forward in tackles, whereas smaller, more agile ball carriers will not be picking up those extra. That's what I'm hoping for because, you know, like even in our Bulldogs franchise, it seems like King compared to Dylan, there's like a good what, almost 50 pound difference. And because of the speed of King, it just seems like even he can run forward and fall forward better than Dylan, who's the power back. So like, I don't understand why that's always been a thing. Hopefully what he's saying here is true because I don't want to see these tiny guys who are fast gaining extra yards. They already have the advantage of getting through the hole quicker. I want them to not gain the extra yards. You know, if if there's like a 200 pound, 250 pound guy and a 250 pound guy going up against each other, I want to see there a chance for our guard to get the first, you know, the extra yardage. But if it's the other side, I don't want that little dude getting anything. I want him dead stopped, you know? Yards. And we improve blocking too. Passing pockets will form deeper and faster around the quarterback. Now that is, once again, a massive, I'll believe it when I see it, because blocking in Madden is probably the worst thing in the game. The catch animations, I'm trying to think right now, uh, they're, the catching animations are pretty rough. Both sides where it's just like super scripted, you know, as it's happening. Like you really can't tell. Like you can tell exactly what's going to happen. Whereas, you know, in the NFL, you just don't know. And expect run blocking momentum enhancements, like more animation variety. You see him run through, <laughs> ironically enough, behind him. He just gets blocked. Once again, I'm trying to find if there's any like any players running on their own. Like you see that guy number 72, but he was probably behind the play. It's hard to tell, you know. Your time with us to learn more about dynamic game day in Madden NFL 22. Stay tuned to EA Sports Madden NFL 22 channels for more information on the game ahead of the worldwide launch on August 20th, 2021. Anyways, that is going to be the deep dive for Madden 22 Dynamic Game Day. Lots of things to like, assuming they're implemented correctly. And uh, some things to worry about, obviously. There are some, you know, balancing issues that I'm worried about. But overall, we're seeing some, uh, you know, some different characteristics for the game. It's not as, as similar as before. You know, there's a lot more things to take into account now. You know, those stadium abilities are pretty big if you let someone get momentum on you. It's going to be kind of bad for you for most stadiums, uh, but overall, I think the biggest complaint and the biggest issue would be catching animations. I think we need to see a bigger variety, less of the older ones. I mean, keep some in there, right? There should be some legacy uh, catches and whatnot, because at the end of the day, you know, in the NFL, there's a lot of just shut up catching where you just like jump ball and you catch it or, you know, you drop it. But overall, I mean, as long as... The blocking is improved. The route running is improved. The zone coverage intelligence is improved because we got to have less players just standing in the middle of nowhere because, oh, they're running a purple and there's no one there. Like, go to somewhere, you know, run up to the quarterback or or back up to some other guy. Find a player, you know. Uh, but overall, I mean, there's more to like this year for Madden heading into it than most years, right? We can all agree with that. So, Let's be a little optimistic. If you don't want to buy the game, don't buy the game, I suppose. But you know, keep an eye on it. I feel like this should be a good year for Madden. I'm hoping so. And obviously, we'll have more to come for the future, assuming more of these deep dives and gridiron notes come out. There was an Ultimate Team gridiron notes, but they're just it was just auction stuff. I may play more Ultimate Team this year. We'll see. Maybe on Twitch.tv slash your care. Regardless, if you guys enjoyed this video, enjoy the Madden 22 news stuff, franchise in general, as we do a ton of Madden content, maybe leave a like, maybe subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Jump Care, second channel, Pick Care Plays, and that is pretty much it. Should be a video later today, unless this just blows up, which doesn't make any sense why it would, uh, and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, hope you guys come back in the next video, but until next video, 